It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Niners and the Vikings. And it comes your way next on Madden Football. A very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Now, Charles, you and I, we've done a lot of games together. It always seems like we're rehashing the same storylines. Turnovers, of course, always a big story. Quarterback play, running backs, yada, yada, yada. But getting ready for this one, one word kept coming to mind, and that's preparation. Well, it's critical to be prepared physically, mentally. When you think about getting ready for an NFL game, you have to wonder, what will they throw at us that maybe we haven't seen before? Two-minute drill, maybe different things like that. Got to be prepared. You're exactly right. Here's the rookie from Alabama, Will Riker, ready to get us started. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The 49ers get ready to go on offense, and it's a pro bowler, Brock Purdy at the helm in his third NFL season now out of Iowa State. And the great story of Brock Purdy continues. Had he been drafted in the first round, I think people would be singing his praises to the skies, but for whatever reason, people can't let go of the fact he's Mr. Irrelevant, and they don't give him the credit he deserves. He is not just a system quarterback. He's a guy who enhances his team. Not just along for the ride, he's the one steering the ship. And without him, their ceiling significantly drops. Purdy off the play fake. And that went into the hands of Ayuk downfield. And he steps out of bounds, but not before he gets inside the 35. So he gets too far beyond the line, and that's an easy call for the official. Pistol McCaffrey fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sit through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Here's Purdy. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. So certainly not the start they were looking for here as they come up on a third and 14. Purdy. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. And that's one of those calls where you play it safe, but you're hoping that maybe something might spring for you because instead of forcing ball downfield on third and long, maybe you can hit him with something underneath, break a tackle or two, pick up a block, and see what happens. Not here, though. Good job reading the screen, and it sets up fourth down. Oh, the return is Powell call that a 44 yard punt five on the return and it will be vikings ball first and ten the vikings offense making their way out behind their former number three overall pick who spent his last year as a 49er it's sam darnold and he's still been looking for that one situation to allow all of his talents to come together he's hoping that he found it here plenty of playmakers on the outside and a team that's willing to run the football to let his talent shine Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at their 36-yard line. In motion right is Addison. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And that is not fooling anyone. He never had a chance to turn the corner there. And they'll go backwards right away. 
Nick Bosa using that speed to get in there and break that play up. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. Yeah, he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Now it's Darnold. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. Leonard Floyd, the old Georgia Bulldog, finding his way into the backfield. And he may have surprised people the last few years, but it shouldn't be a surprise anymore when he gets to the quarterback. These last four seasons, 39 and a half sacks during that span, and the 49ers expect that kind of production throughout the season. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now Darnold. And his throw is incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield and man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw is Darnold. Setting up the screen here, Aaron Jones. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It's a gain of six, but not enough, as he'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that, puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance, if they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. Out of the gun, Purdy. That's complete, it's Brandon Ayuk. And he'll go out of bounds after getting this across the 15. A quick first down pickup, good start after going three and out on their opening drive. Now Purdy, he's got Ayuk once again. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where Every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. First catch of the game there for Samuel, and it results in a first down. And Samuel gets him a first down, which matches his New Jersey number and continues to be a Swiss Army knife for a loaded Niners offense. He had over 1,100 yards from scrimmage and 12 touchdowns a season ago, and he appears destined to have another big year. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 
13 yards there and a Niner first. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Gets this one to use check. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third of inches. Purdy looking to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 27-yard line. 18 yards, a big pickup there on third down. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as he gets this down to the 13-yard line. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. On the toss, they run wide side with McCaffrey. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Back to throw, Purdy. That's complete to the tight end, Saubert. Showed off the toughness, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. So eight yards on the completion there, and now it's third and three. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion, but I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication, and as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense. That's caught by Debo Samuel. Touchdown, San Francisco. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the 49ers go coast-to-coast coast and finish the drive off with six points. First and goal, forget running the football, forget establishing anything, just put it in the end zone with the pass for a touchdown. Oh, yeah, I guess that's the definition of catching the defense off guard there. They weren't expecting that. And that totally goes against type, doesn't it? When you think first and goal from the one, you're thinking running play. Jake Moody now for the point after. And the 49ers grab a 7 to nothing lead. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception.
So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And able to get this out to the 25. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. And the slot man goes in motion left. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. Down the right sideline. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Justin Jefferson, 75 yards. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. And we didn't even get a chance to settle in for that drive. A quick strike of 75 yards, and they find the end zone. Don't you get the sense that film study was behind this one, that they saw something that they thought they could take advantage of? The key is calling it in the right situation. Knowing when it exists to go to it, they did exactly that. They've got to feel really good about what they did in advance of this game. Just looking down at the sideline now, their defense is like, man, can you have strung that out just a few <laughs> plays? Give us a break. Back out there. Hey, man, get that water break and get on out there and play. Point after, right down the middle. And we are tied at seven. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got him. So the completion gets him just a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. We're throwing here, Purdy. That's caught. It's McCaffrey again. So that'll go as a four-yard loss on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. I believe I could see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room. Too close to the sideline. And for defenders, we're often taught, 11 on the field, those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. And he's finally taken down, and it's a big game there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. 7-7, our score after one. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. Shotgun now with Purdy. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, 
He joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 34. A give running left, it's McCaffrey. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Here's second and 10. Purdy from the gun. He's got this complete to Ayuk on the out route. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. They get 17 down to the 17, and it's a first down. What a drive this has been, just chewing up the yardage. And here's one of their best plays yet as they finally get down into the red zone and look to finish this off with six. Purdy now to throw. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Facing a second and three, ball on the 10. Back to the ground attack here, it's McCaffrey. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Purdy. Touchdown, 49ers! Jerron Jennings, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the 49ers have now taken the lead. As a former defender, I would be angry as well. Could not get off the field. Well-executed offensive drive. No matter what the defense tried, they couldn't stop them. Extra point try now for Moody. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's polished off by a touchdown for San Francisco. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. For the Vikings offense and Justin Jefferson set to take over once more. And it may be time for this defense to start throwing a second defender his way because whatever they've done, it has not worked in this first half. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. An excellent run there coming from out wide. And we used to consider these jet sweeps to be gadget plays or something a little bit unusual, right? But now most teams have some version of this play in their playbook. And I think it's a lot because of the receivers that are being developed nowadays. These guys look like running backs, even though they're playing out on the perimeter. That time on the outside, pretty nice job as a cornerback to shed any would-be blockers and make the tackle. And think about the praise we're giving him, what his coaches are giving him, but how about the respect he gets from his teammates to be a complete corner 
who doesn't just cover receivers, but also tackles ball carriers. Gets this to his running back, Aaron Jones. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Faking the give, Darnold. He'll find Jones again, complete. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here? You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Niners offense and Brock Purdy getting ready for this next possession. And he's had things all his way in this first half. The number's sensational as he'll look to add to them with another drive here. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 43. Here's Purdy. Gets this to his running back. It's Christian McCaffrey. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll bring up second down. Back to throw. Purdy. Got a man. That's Ayuk. He's up to 88 yards receiving in the ball game now, and he's got a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. A very solid gain of 27. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up for the first and goal. McCaffrey. We'll get down close to the goal line, but not in, as he'll be marked down at the one. Give him two yards on that one, second and goal now. Good work there, holding him out on first down, and this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? Second and goal from the one. Looking to throw, Purdy. That's to the pylon and incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Can this Vikings D hold up one more time? Third and goal. Back to throw. Purdy. And he hauls it in in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Juwan Jennings.
with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Niners go up by two touchdowns. Touchdowns on their first three possessions, and they're a PAT from going up 21 to 7. Yeah, very impressive the way that they've moved the football. Full command of their playbook, full command of the way they wanted to attack. Now Moody for the PAT. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. So that a seven-play, 80-yard drive. And the end result for the 49ers, a touchdown. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Darnold now to throw. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Now a second and ten. Back to throw, Darnold. A uh, quick throw there is incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Darnold. I had a man but he missed him and it's incomplete well how about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down dime defense blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed unable to find an open hole to complete that pass so on fourth down on is the punter ryan wright he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away fair catch called for and made right at the 25 yard line the Niners offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more and he's done everything you could have asked for coming in he's spread it around he hasn't taken many chances and he's potentially on his way to a big game throwing the football The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. Now Purdy. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Ayuk going to go in motion right. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. Oh, this one may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. They go backwards there two yards, and second and one is now third and three. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. 
But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Samuel going to go in motion right. They'll look to throw here on first down. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and two. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Connects with Kittle underneath. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as he'll get this down to the 41. It'll be a gain of six that time as it moves the chains as well. I'd have to say they're feeling like they are in rhythm right now. Things are in sync, aren't they? Team's winning, got a nice little margin on the scoreboard, completing some passes, and they just completed another one for a first down there to the tight end. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. They showed up a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Purdy will look to throw again here. Over the middle, that's complete to McCaffrey. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It's a big play, yet amazingly, because of how far they had to go, they're still looking at a second down here. He's having a nice game through the air. His decision-making's been really good. Solid there again. Just seeing nothing downfield goes underneath. Nice game. How about the patience? Because when you're having a big game through the air, you're looking for those chunk plays, those big ones downfield. Instead, as you noted, takes the check down, dumps it off, gains good yardage anyway. Really well executed. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over in that time, and it's going to lead to third down. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as he'll be marked out a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Purdy looking to throw. Throws the out loud and completes it to Samuel. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Purdy sets up to throw again. Looking for the out route. He's got it. Complete to Kittle. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as he's down inside the 15. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time, nine yards, and the sticks move again. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Back to throw, Purdy. That is incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground. Now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. 
second and ten. Out of the gun, Purdy. And did he get the feet down? Yes, touchdown. Debo Samuel as the first half is winding down. And the 49ers will extend their lead here just before halftime. So the numbers are starting to pile up here early on. We have yet to reach halftime, yet that is already now four touchdown passes. Extra point try now for Moody. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. This second and four. To throw is Darnold. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Now it's Darnold. Oh, he had a man open. He overshot him. It's incomplete. Oh, and that's kind of how it's gone for him so far. That was a ball they need to get back in this game. A quick strike, a big play. But he led his guy too far, and it winds up over his head. And likely time for one final play here in the half, so they will go for it on fourth down. A final shot before the break. Darnold, and it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting 49ers on top. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Vikings set to receive the second half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. But the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. 
And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. And they'll send the slot in motion left. Now Darnold. Complete. Jefferson the target. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. And this is what they're going to need more of. It's the third quarter. You're trailing. You've got to come out with a renewed sense of purpose, and that's a nice way to kick off the drive with good yardage and a first down. They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. This one swung out here to Jones. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. A well-executed 22-yard gain. A lot of times the key is just get him the ball and let him do his thing. And they got it out to him on the left side. And he did exactly that. Excellent run after the catch. So again from the 39, this time from the other side of the field. Here's first and 10. Off of play action, Darnold. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Justin Jefferson, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. It's up and good, and it's now 28 to 14. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The 49ers offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You that went out wide and intercepted. Picked off by Harrison Smith. So a potential momentum shifter there, working with a two-score lead third quarter. But that... Not the smartest of throws. I would agree with you on that one because this game is still very much in the balance. It felt pretty one-sided to this point, but now if these guys can turn this turnover into points, things could start getting a little more interesting. Justin Jefferson and the rest of this offense, they've got their helmets back on and they're ready for this next series. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. 
They'll try and get the running game going with Jones. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. This is second and eight. Again, it's Jones. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Here's Darnold. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Trent Sherfield, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings take the interception on defense and convert it into six points. Partner, remember that old film of Peyton Manning going through the route tree with his great receivers in Indianapolis? I think we're seeing the results of the same type of work here today. And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs, and I think they're going to at least take a look at this. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How's the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Extra point attempt here still to come. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. The drive there only spanning three plays, and it's polished off by a Viking score. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The visitor's offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And he had it going in the first half, that's for sure. He's really had his way with his secondary. They've been powerless to stop him. And he'll look to keep it rolling right here. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. He'll fire this deep for Ayuk. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, 49ers. Brandon Ayuk, 69 yards. And the Niners are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, that is certainly a deflator right there defensively. Their guys just came off of a touchdown drive. They're back in the game, and then bam, they give up a touchdown one play later. How about that? And the momentum, which seemingly had shifted the other direction, thought we might be seeing a comeback. <laughs> that momentum right back the other way. Well, that is certainly not complimentary football that we saw right there. The defense is supposed to help their offense not give up another touchdown. Now Moody for the PAT. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. They certainly made quick work of that. Ultra quick work. One of the fastest drives you'll ever see. Just one play resulting in the touchdown.
So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Well, the home team's offense and their wide receiver getting set for this next possession. And he was pretty much unguardable in that first half. You see the numbers there as they try to add to him here in this third quarter. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but Charles, they look up, and they're still down double digits, so you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended. Go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. Second down, eight to go from the 28. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? They'll step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know. Defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. Faking the give, Darnold. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And Jones is not going to have the first down as they stop him short. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. They tried to run it to the short side of the field. There just wasn't a whole lot of room to work with. Yeah, it seems like things just kept getting strung out towards the sideline, and he kept looking for a spot to dive up into the gap. There just wasn't one, so that turned into nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And no gain. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. Now the 49ers settling in for their next drive. And as we look back at how we got here, you'll notice a common theme in these highlights. A lot of yardage through the air. The passing game has been sharp right from the outset. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And CD, you know, sometimes you don't need those complicated game plans or the added wrinkles. The last time that you think about it, couldn't have been any simpler. One play, one pass, touched it. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. Debo Samuel. 66 yards. And the Niners have moved out in front by three touchdowns. So add another one into the touchdown column. What a game. That is now six touchdown passes for him so far in this one. An extra point try now for Moody. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. Those are the kind of drives they like on offense from the coordinator to the quarterback, the line, everybody. One play drive and into the end zone for six. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. 
And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. There's a glimpse of Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver, as he and the Minnesota Vikings return back here on offense. He's having a day here in quarter number three. Over 100 yards, couple touchdowns. Every receiver's hope for when they head into that game in the National Football League. And his team is loving what he's giving them. Of course, the yardage is terrific, but I think it's what you mentioned, the two touchdowns. That's the big one because he's paying off his results downfield. And still more time here. Third quarter, we'll see what else he has in store for us. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Play action. It's Darnold. Oh, and that is incomplete. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. A play fake, and it's Darnold. That is caught. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. So much for the run on third and one. Instead, it's a big chunk in the pass game. First down. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 26-yard line. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Justin Jefferson, 26 yards. And the Vikings get a bit closer. Well, yes, that's his third touchdown catch, which is very impressive. But on the scoreboard, they're still struggling. So it's safe to say that without him, my goodness, yikes, they are in major league trouble. He's doing his best to try and keep them in the game. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. And the lead will be cut down to 14. Just a four-play drive that time. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So now out comes this offense, led by their quarterback as they take over once more. And he's been a nightmare to scheme against throughout this one. This defense has been totally taken apart, and that is borne out in his numbers. He's been terrific all game long. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. Charles, this offense, they've been on a roll. Two drives ago, they scored. Remember, last drive was that one play touchdown strike, so now they're looking to make it three for three. You know, I talked to a Hall of Famer one time about, hey, when you're on defense and these types of things are happening to you, what goes through your mind? And he told me at that point, it's not about schemes. It's not about what's called from the sideline. It's about players. Who's going to make a play, make a stand, and stop this offense from doing what they've been doing? Purdy. That's complete to the tight end, Saubert. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. 
but at least he was able to pick up a solid gain to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second down and two. Up the gut, McCaffrey runs through the contact. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. He'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Purdy. Throw right side is going to be caught by Samuel. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. On first down, this is McCaffrey. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Here's a second and five. Purdy now to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Here's Purdy. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey, and he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. And they call it a loss of a yard there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. And right now, Charles, this is about building that lead little by little, and they're able to do just that. And it gets them past the key number of 16, so this is now a three-score lead. Not time to exhale just yet, but that might prove to be an important three points before things are said and done. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Justin Jefferson and the rest of this offense, they've got their helmets back on, and they're ready for this next series. Oh, this defense, they wouldn't mind not seeing him again for a while. <laughs> Three trips to the end zone. How about that? I think right now they would happily go to their general manager and say, is there any way you could get a trade for him? Bring him over to our team so Switch we don't have to cover him anymore because he is really having a heck of a ball game, isn't he? Boy, he is. I don't know if that mid-game train's going to happen, but good thought. A shotgun snap for Darnold. This one brought in by Jefferson. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them, and these guys have been taking advantage so far. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he's across the 45, it'll be second down. The way things have gone in this one, the running game's been something of an afterthought, and that's not been too bad for them, has it? Yeah, the offensive returns have been good, but I guess we figured he and the ground game would be a bit more involved. From the 46, here's the second and eight. Here's Darnold. Looking middle, and that's complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 45-yard line. 
10 yards and it's good for a Viking first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Back to throw, Darnold. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Up the middle, Jones. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Well, another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, and they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because... They have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. Got to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. And he's got this one across midfield into 49er territory. Give him three yards on the run. Now they'll need to drop something good here on third and 13. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game Make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. Oh, he had a man running free, but he overshot him, and it's incomplete. Looked like they were set up defensively in a zone coverage, but somehow they found a seam because that receiver all alone by Wright, that should have been a touchdown, but somehow this ball's overthrown. And here's Ryan Wright now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And this offense headed back out, captained, of course, by their quarterback. And you get a look at the numbers, so they don't even tell the whole story. This has been a tremendous performance to this point. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. They made that way too easy for them. No one is supposed to be that open against an NFL defense. Once he caught the ball, there wasn't anybody close enough to stop him. And he was able to continue downfield after making the catch. The throwing here, Purdy. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. So the completion good for seven there. And it's second down. So both offenses come to life here in this third quarter as this is shaping up for a good finish. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's 49er football here. They've got the lead as well as we get set to start the fourth and final quarter. This is Samuel. And a short game down to about the 33. This is how offensive coordinators earn their money. He throws ahead of the curve after first down. Got seven yards first down play, but then you get stuffed there on second down, maybe just a yard out of it. Now your advantage has evaporated. The Niners on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. Here it's third and two. They'll bring a tight end in motion right. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Niners first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And motion left goes a tight end. Purdy will set up to throw it here. 
Open man is Samuel, complete. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. A bit of a jump there, CD. He breaks the line, and that'll be five yards. And you've got to stay more disciplined than that, Brandon. That's just a free gift to the offense. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and ten. Purdy from the gun. Completes it to Jennings. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. Second down and three, ball on the seven. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they don't even need to run a second down play. Give them the first. And typically when we see this jumping, isn't it usually third down, fourth down? They got them on second down. I think that's a lack of discipline. So now from half the distance closer, here's first and goal. Purdy looking to throw. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. They're certainly not letting up on the pressure in this one, and oftentimes you hear this expression, all gas, no break from defenses. But in this case, it's the offense still throwing the football up big in the fourth quarter. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. And it's complete in the end zone. Touchdown 49ers. Eric Saubert from three yards out as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. So that is going to tie an NFL record that has stood for more than 70 years. Seven touchdown passes in one game. It was first done by Sid Luckman of the Bears in 1943, then by Adrian Burke of the Eagles in 54. And now that mark equaled here in this one. Now Moody for the PAT. And the lead is now 24. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's polished off by a touchdown for San Francisco. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. This offense making its way back out, led by their wide receiver. And he's looking to finish strong. He has been the star of the show, as they have just had absolutely no answers for him defensively. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Now second and five. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. Go, 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 go. 
Darnold. Over the middle, it's complete. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. It's another first down as they look his way again, this time 19 yards. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Darnold to throw again. Pass complete to Addison. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. They'll try the right side with Jones to the 27-yard line. So not a lineman, but the tight end instead this time, drawing the holding call. And more and more what you're getting with tight ends are guys who are much more receiver than blocker. They may be willing, but that might not. Darnold, he lost the football. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately, had an alert teammate who was able to get it. So they keep the football, but now face second and long. Here's Darnold. Firing. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. And I don't know that that fumble is going to matter a whole lot. You look at the deficit here in the fourth. It doesn't matter. The coach on the sideline still scratching his head. Yeah, not only scratching his head, but probably writing a note or two about, we're going to address this come practice next week because maybe that's the reason we're down this far. Doesn't matter at this point. But being sloppy throughout the game, not going to help him improve. Debo Samuel and the 49ers back in possession here. So far, he has the trio of touchdowns. Obviously, it's been a pretty good game for him. So if this were hockey, they'd be throwing their hats out on the ice for the hat trick, right? I'm not sure exactly what you do in the NFL, except applaud and continue to hope you see a little bit more of this. What a tremendous game. You want to start a new tradition? What can we throw on the field? I don't know. We'll, we'll throw your mic out there. <laughs> a lot of fans would like that. <laughs> Cut his mic off. Three touchdowns so far. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. And inside give to Jones. Dances by him. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. After the run by Jones, here's first and 10. Now Darnold. Out route to Jefferson, and he's got it. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Running right, Jones. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Two yards the gain there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. 
The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation. Already down in his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. To throw is Darnold. And that is incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Fourth down, and for Darnold, it's desperation time. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Vikings are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Now it's Darnold. And he's got it. Touchdown, Vikings! Trent Sherfield with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings are able to cut into that deficit. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free and his guy made a nice catch just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game they're gonna run for with Jones and he's gonna get in for the score and the lead now cut to 14 well it's still an uphill battle from here that's for sure but that makes it a two score game and now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready, because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the 49er hands team does its job. The risk reward of the onside kick, when you don't get it, the risk comes out to play, and here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything, because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them, and field position leads you to that type of play calling, and whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, now that they've given up that type of field position, the advantage is switched to their opponent. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. Bring this one inside the 35. So that time they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. They'll try and burn some clock now with McCaffrey. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning.
So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Give him four yards there, but still in a big hole. Third and long. And this is the worry because sometimes you can get a little too predictable in spots like this. You know you're going to run the ball, but they know you're going to run the ball as well. And now you look up and you're staring at an important third down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. Here comes the 49ers punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. So Sam Darnold in the offense. Down by 16, a minute 53 remaining. Somehow they need to come up with a pair of touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Here's Darnold. That's taken in by Sherfield. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Now second and four. Darnold. Able to find Jones. And we're definitely getting towards the point of the game where not getting a lot of yards is secondary to keeping the clock moving. I mean, to me, that's a double win defensively. Short gain and some more time off the clock. Boy, here's a big one. You can just feel it. This is third down now. Now Darnold. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Two timeouts remaining, but time is of the essence. Down two scores. It's first and ten. This is caught by Addison. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. They'll come up first and ten here. Darnold to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens in bounds. Just over 50 seconds remain. Here's second and 10. To the air again, Darnold. And this is caught for a touchdown, so hang on now. Things just got a little bit more interesting here in the final minute. So that one, his fourth touchdown catch of the game, one behind the all-time record of five. So the touchdown was big, this almost equally big as he'll try to get it to a one-score game with a two-point conversion. Now it's Darnold, and that one is caught. So they convert here and don't look now, but 
this one's back to a one-score game. And hold the phone now. This game isn't over yet. Not at all. Now, get the football back. That's the first thing. However you do it, get the ball back and then manipulate the clock with your offense because you've got to get the ball into the end zone. So a little under 50 seconds to go. Plenty of time if they can get this onside kick. And it's the 49ers who recover it. And that ought to just about do it. And that's why you have your hands team out there on the field. Those are the best guys ready to make that play. And let's face it. It was executed well. It wasn't a bad kick. It wasn't anything like that. Just that the normal outcome actually came to play. Analytics would tell you it's a very low possibility of getting the ball for the team kicking it in an onside kick situation. You're all about the numbers, aren't all you? All about the numbers, baby. It's a new game now. They don't lie. Down to a knee for the 49ers. This one about to be on ice. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 45 seconds left to go in the game. And they will take a knee here. Purdy down to a knee, and that should be the final act of the ball game. Well, Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea where the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense. They certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.